Hilti Field Points is a software that's designed to allow you to create points while you model in AutoCAD. Once you create your points, you can then take that point as a CSV file or a TXT file and upload it to a Total Station tablet to go and lay out your digital design. In this video, I'm going to review how to set up the settings for your points to make sure that you know what they're going to look like on your screen as you make them. First things first though, of course, Hilti Field Points is in the ribbon of your AutoCAD program. And Hilti Field Points can only be used on a full licensed version of AutoCAD. Unfortunately, it will not work on light versions of AutoCAD. So to begin, let's go to settings. And you'll notice in settings that there's three tabs here. You have the annotation tab, tooltip tab, and general tab. Let's start in the annotation tab first. The annotation tab is basically how you want your points to look when you annotate them and mark them in the, in the plan. You'll see that every point has the option of having a description, a separator, a point number, text height, meaning the height that the point text is going to appear on your plan as you make them, the text style or the font, and the layer that you want to put your annotations on. That's this section up here. Now to make sure you understand what these all are, I'm gonna actually create a point and we're gonna go through this one by one so you can see what you're actually editing. I'll quickly create a point, just a general point. And if you notice in my point creation, I have a description here. So I'll go ahead and call this, let's say I'm making a fire stop sleeve for plumbing. I'll go ahead and give it the description of a sleeve. For now, I'll make my annotation location automatic. And so for my prefix of my point number, as every single point can have a number, I'll go ahead and call this LP for a layout point. So right now I have a description of a sleeve, prefix being LP with the number of the point being number one. And I'll add a suffix if I, just to explain what it is, suffix will be fire stop, so that I know that this is a fire stop sleeve. All the other things about creating a point I'll explain later. But here we have our, my annotations. So let me go ahead and place a point. I'll just simply place it at the end of this grid line. And now you can see that I have sleeve my description lp1 for my point with fire stop as my suffix let's go ahead and go back into settings to see why it appeared that way you'll see that the annotation first part is description which is right here sleeve i don't have a separator it's blank but if i wanted to add a colon of some sort you'll notice that that colon would actually appear there to say description colon point number and suffix the last part is the point number. Now the point number is everything from the prefix of the point number and the suffix. So when you create a point, you can choose not to have a suffix. You can even choose not to have a prefix. You can just have a number, Complete your, completely your choice. You do, however, have to have a number in there. So let's do this. Let me go ahead and change some of these annotation settings and apply them just so you can see how they change. I'll keep the separator as a colon. Let's increase my text height to something a little bit larger, even though I would never use a one foot that's a little bit too big, but just to show you the example, uh, text height's one foot, text style, we can even change this to a new font, um, and annotation layer zero is, a f is fine for me. And let's even change our text offset. Let's make this to be a six inch offset this time. And uh, we'll worry about the leaders later. Okay, so there's my settings now for my annotation. Let me highlight this point annotations and let me apply the new annotation settings. I went ahead and made this layer a white layer so we can see this a little bit easier. Okay what do we see? We see that the annotations now have exactly what we set. The separator is now a colon sleeve. Our point name is still the same but the height is one foot now. The distance from the, the bottom of this T to the top of the T is one foot on my plan and you can see my my font changed to this new font. Now what didn't change is my text offset. I believe I need to make a new point for that to happen and so I'll go ahead and do that real quick. I'll place a point at the center of the circle and you can see the annotation distance is now six inches apart or before it was much closer. So hopefully that's sufficient for you to understand how you create your point, what these mean, as well as some of what these mean which we can go into a little bit more in a moment. Before I go forward though I want to explain one thing when you create your points, obviously this description appears in the drawing, but when you export the points, the only th information about your points that gets exported is the name itself. And I can show you that over here in my Excel file I have, I'll just kind of bring it over here. When I export at this point, it only has the point name itself in there without the description and its location. 
So just be aware that the description does not pull over when you export this point as part of a CSV, but certainly it will show up as part of the drawing. Okay, let me go ahead and restore this to default. I'll still make my text height six inches. Let's explain what happens when you have leaders and manual placement for your annotations. When you use a leader, what happens is the leader is simply going to appear as you would, would expect. You can see I have a little arrow pointing down to the point down here with the description over here and the arrowhead offset. This is completely up to your preference as you would prefer to use a leader in anything else you model in AutoCAD. Automatic placement, this is simply asking you where you would like your annotations to be set. Upper left corner, which is what I have here, so you can see it's upper left corner or any other corner of the point, completely your preference. If you do choose to manually place your annotation, you can have the option to also rotate it. So let me just see, let you see what this looks like. I'm going to place a point. In this case, I'll make sure that my place annotation is manual. And now let's place it. I'll put a point here. And now you can see I can manually place my annotation wherever I want. So I'll click it down here. And I can also rotate it. If that is your preference, you can do that. And you can see I have a leader because I have my leader checked as well. So hopefully that quick tutorial gives you plenty of flexibility to choose how you want to annotate your points as you make them. One last note here I will mention is you can see that my annotation layer right now is set to layer zero. My layer zero is a white color, but you can notice that the point itself is a blue layer. Just know that your annotations and your point itself can be on two separate layers. What you'll see here is when I place my point, I can either just choose to have it be on the layer that I have turned on in the moment, or I can have it be on a layer of my choosing. So yes, the annotation and the point itself can be on two different layers if you so choose. Now let me review the tooltip. The tooltip is essentially the information you'll see when you highlight over a point. It's very simple. So you can see that I have uh, field point type, description, entity name, etc. So if I just simply press OK and I go to my point on here and I highlight over it, that's the information that you're going to see. The field point, the type, the description, etc. You'll see all that information with the coordinates and of course the layer that it's on. So if you ever need to change that information and the order that it appears, just let me come in here and, and change it. Uh, typically speaking, um, I, I don't really change it from what I see here. I don't really use this feature too much, but it's simply an option for you and that's all it does. Lastly, your general tab. This is pretty simple as well. Uh, you can see that there are five attributes you can place on your field points as you use them. And you can simply title what these attributes are. So right now they're just simply labeled attribute one, two, three, four, and five. But if for whatever reason you wanted to change their category, so I'll say um, sleeve type one, sleeve type two, etc. You'll notice that those attributes, when I go to place a manual point, those are going to be the categories that I have down here. Now what's nice about these attributes is that these will export with the data of the point when you make a CSV file. And to show you that, let me just simply place a point here. Now after exporting, you can see here that I have the points and the attributes that I typed in are appearing there as well. So I can have all those attributes within my CSV file as well if I need all five. So if there's any questions about your field point settings at all, please leave them in the comments, but I believe this should get you started really well.